was me. I called for Jesus. He said he, but he loves me. Glory be to God. He says he loves me. So many preachers are preaching about the love of God. But then I need him. He's not showing up. Immediately. I mean, put yourself in Mary and Martha's shoes. At least they see him physically. You and I don't see him physically. We are believing God for him to show up. But they saw him physically. Immediately, the situation takes place. They say for him. They didn't go to the doctors. They didn't go anywhere. They had complete faith. They sing for this guy, and he says, oh, no, I'm coming. Come and do what? If that was me, I'd be asking, what are you doing? What do you mean coming? What, you're having a cup of tea or something? Oh, don't worry about that. My brother's only dying. Glory be to God. But Jesus says, wait. He says, I'm coming. Three days. Basically, he's saying the vision is for an appointed time. And when the time comes, the victory is going to be sweet. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what you're believing God for, what you're waiting for. You believe if God only showed up, you know that Mary said, if only you showed up a couple of days ago. If only you just showed even if you only showed up a couple of days ago. It would have been better. And you would have looked at your situation. Had God showed up, God would have died. Had God showed up, just give me one second, God would have died. Lord, 
What have I done? Can I just deliver somebody today? You've been listening to the voices of the friends of Job. You know, the friends of Job came. They have no idea. People don't even know you and they make conclusions about you. They, de they, de they declare why and how you got into your situation. They don't even know you. They came and sat down before Job and they said it was because of some sin that he committed or because of some error of judgment that he had or because of some indiscretion. But the Bible tells us in the very first chapter of Job that he was a devout man. It has nothing to do with your mistakes. It has nothing to do with you're a sinner. It has all to do with Jesus giving himself all the glory. Amen. And he will glorify himself in your situation. Amen. So he shows up. I'm going somewhere. He shows up. And even Mary says, well, thank God you're showing up now. But if you really read it, and sisters, you can hear me out too. Like, you're showing up now? Yeah. <laughs> you know when the sister says, you're showing up now? You know when the sister asks you a question? When they're asking you, you're not wearing that shirt, are you? You're I've got sure. it on. <laughs> <laughs> to translate that into womanese is take that shirt off, you look horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. There you go, I found a new word, womanies. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Glory be to God. He shows up, but all the way that he was on his way there, he kept on saying that he's sleeping. Yes. And what God is trying to tell you when he said he's sleeping is that the situation is temporary. Mm -hmm. Oh Lord, have mercy. That the situation is temporary because anybody who sleeps wakes up as long as there's life in them. So he looks at the death situation and says, it's temporary. His situation is temporary. And when you have a vision of where God is taking you, and you hit a roadblock, all you need to understand is that it's temporary. Yeah. And if you know who Jesus is, if you know who God is, then you know that there can never be a finality to your case. In the last minute, God will show up. Amen. Joseph was put in the pit. They were going to kill him. They were about to kill him before they put him in the pit. God raised up one of the brothers. He said, let's not kill him. Let's put throw in the pit. That is Jesus showing up in the last minute. Amen. At the point where you think that it's going to be concluded, it's going to be over, he shows up. He shows up by setting up somebody to fight your own battle. Amen. Places where you can't go. I remember John and Peter when they were brought before the council. So why are you preaching the name of Jesus? And they were about to kill him. He raised up somebody called Gamaliel. Yeah. Who began to speak on their behalf. And let them go. And they shut themselves on the foot because they said, if this is of God, it will not, it will not last. But because it was, it was of God, it shook the whole nation. Glory be to God. Where I'm going today, I'm talking about timing for your vision. But it has to start with you knowing who Jesus is. So that if you know who God is, you know who Jesus is, you know that he will always be, he's a very present help in time of need. It's not a cliche, it's a reality. Amen. The problem with us as Christians today, we quote scriptures we don't even believe in. When somebody says, oh, well, you know, we speak Christian, and say, how are you? I'm blessed and highly favored. We don't even believe it. Because yeah, right. well, blessed means you're empowered to prosper. Yes. It means that where, everywhere you are, you will prosper. It's only a matter of time. And the time is in God's hands. Amen. And if the, the, the uh, recession can hit, the storm can hit, anything can happen, there's no way you will not prosper. Amen. Because of who God is. A man who honor, a God who honors his word more than his name. A man, a God who stakes his reputation based on everything he says. Glory be to God. Praise God. So Jesus 
now shows up, then he says it's because I want to be glorified. And how was he glorified? By the time he got there, a crowd has gathered. Oh, Lord have mercy. A crowd has gathered. In the midst of the crowd, could you imagine? Lazarus, after he is raised from the dead, could you imagine him living life afterwards? He'll be walking, oh, that's Lazarus, whom God showed up. At the last minute, he was dead. And Jesus showed up and rose him from the dead. Could you remember Ben, who lost all his business? And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, he just rose up. An investor came out of somewhere. And he's now the biggest business in the whole world. Yeah. Could you imagine who, who is he is? Who all of a sudden has been trying to get married? And then all of a sudden, some hot looking guy comes Ooh. looking for him. Oh, I made a guy. And the guy pays me a million bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know what, where my agenda is going Just so you know. Could you imagine? He, he becomes the talk of town. That is how the name of the Lord is glorified. Amen. When you look at your situation, and then all of a sudden when they see where you have come out. See, the scripture now makes sense when it says, He took my feet from the miry clay, like sinking sand, and put it on a solid rock to stand. When you stand on a rock, it means everybody begins to look at you. That's why the scripture now makes more sense. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. And you need to understand that you are a city set on a hill. When a city is built on a hill, when people are coming, they can see the city from afar. It means people will come to the brightness of your glory. Oh Lord, have mercy. I'm talking about time and I'm going somewhere. Please bear with me. I'm just painting the picture right now. The most important thing we need to understand concerning fulfilling the vision is to know who God is. <laughs> if you know who God is, the Bible says you should know, John 8, 32, you should know the truth and the truth that you know will set you free. Setting you free means exempting you. It means that a freedom doesn't apply to anybody else, but it doesn't apply to you. Amen. You may be down, but not out. Mm. Remember watching a boxing match one time, a long time ago? Somebody got knocked out the first round. About the fifth round, he got knocked down again. About the seventh round, he got knocked down again. But about the twelfth round, he knocked that person down. And he became the champion. And then you begin, and people who are knocking you down, are just preparing you for the glory. Yes. They're just preparing you. Because then, the guy who knocked him down three times, all the work he has done has come to naught. <laughs> he did all that work to give the glory to that guy. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Now let me just put a disclaimer. That doesn't mean you should go and start boxing if you're not called to be a boxer. <laughs> God help you. Yes. Praise God. So he shows up. What am I talking about? The vision is for an appointed time. Amen. When God shows up, it's because it's for an appointed time. Yes. And when we look at the, 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 the concept of time, the way we look at time is different from the way God looks at time. Mm. It's so different. We look at 24 hours. When we, let's just, for argument's sake, do you understand that time has always been indefinite? God was the one who put a mark on time. When he created the universe, when he created the world, he says, let the morning and the evening be the day, be one day. He was the one who put a mark on that time. But before that, time was indefinite. And the only reason he put that there is so that we can relate. Not that so we can begin to say, by this time, I should be this, by that time, I should be that. No, no, no. He created it. Bible says in the beginning God created the heavens. What time frame was that? What time frame was that? Nobody can say that time frame. The Bible says after the first uh, era of creation, he says, and he said the morning and the evening became what? One, day. one day. It's because he called it one day. Otherwise we wouldn't have known what a day is. Glory 